235 pounds. I bench press 400 pounds, squat 600 pounds. Um, from Holland, Michigan. My parents are born, born and raised from Cairo, Egypt, and they came to the States about 20 years ago. And being Egyptian is a big part of who I am. Uh, right now, I'm a certified personal trainer, SWAT Fitness Club in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I also am in grad school getting my master's in um, exercise physiology and sports administration. And over this summer, I played the sport called slam ball. And what this is, is full contact basketball on trampolines. And it, you might have seen it on Versus. It was also on CBS for our playoffs and our finals. Great sport, really exciting. And kept me in shape and got me, you know, even bigger, faster, and stronger than, uh, than what I was at. In college, I went to Western Michigan University. I redshirted my first year. Then I went to Grand Rapids Community College, and that's when I made the transition from running back to linebacker. There, I earned All-American honorable mention as a linebacker, and when I returned to Western Michigan, I started as a running back. After some injuries at the linebacker position, I moved over to linebacker and uh, ended up being a good fit. And my junior year as a linebacker, I earned first team all MAC. I was named Western Michigan's most outstanding defensive player, two time MAC West Division Defensive Player of the Week. I finished the leading the team in tackles, tackles for loss, and sacks. I was ranked sixth in the NCAA for tackles for loss. And in my senior season, I was named to second team AP All-American. I was named the Mid-American Conference Defensive Player of the Year, first team All-Mac, led the NCAA in sacks with 17 and tackles for loss with 25 and a half, and sacks per game with 1.42 and tackles for loss per game with 2.13. Let's talk a little more football and go to Western Michigan for this one. Unbelievable story. Uh, Amir Ismail, linebacker there, ties the NCAA record with six sacks in one game. 13 tackles leads the team. And just to finish it off, an interception return yeah, for a not? touchdown, right? I mean, you know, it's a slow day at <laughs> sure. the office, okay? He calls home and he speaks to his father, and his father says, well, you know, you're a week late, kid. And he goes, what do you mean? He goes, well, as it turns out, the Buckus Award trimmed its list of semifinalists down to 10 after last weekend's games. So if he would have had this kind of performance, he was on the, the list initially, he would still be in there. Uh. Now, all I can say is downtown Orlando Club... <laughs> You got to look at this and see whether or not you want to add a guy because he has the credentials. Timing is everything there. I feel there are only a few things that might have hindered my uh, path to the NFL, and that could have been some of the injuries that I've had. But I'm 100% now, I'm ready to go. And um, it's possible that, you know, sometimes politics, you know, with the coaches and and uh, getting a shot, you know, a smaller school might have, uh, you know, impeded that as well. But I'd like to read something that when I went to the Kansas City Chiefs and got into camp that was wrote about me in, um, in the newspaper. It says, linebacker Miriam Smell from Western Michigan University was impressive. He was so comfortable playing outside linebacker the last three days, I can't believe he went undrafted. He was everywhere. On running plays, he was there to make the tackle. On passing plays, he quickly tracked down the receivers and tight ends, stopping them for little gains. I can see Amir making this team. The Chiefs have yet to sign him as of Monday afternoon, but that should just be a formality. And that's exactly what I think it was. You know, it's just bad luck, and maybe you know it takes a lot more than just one coach or a couple coaches to get you on a team. And they might have liked the guy at uh, you know University of Florida that didn't make as much plays and just had a bigger name and a bigger um, school that he went to. So you know, regardless of what it, what happened, what it was, you know, politics, you know, formalities and and whatnot. You know, I'm here. I'm ready to go, and and uh, I'm going to give it my all. I won my shot. I led the nation in sacks. I played with a lot of these guys uh, or against and. You know, I've seen the level of competition. I know I can, I can play at that level, if not, you know, better than some of those guys that are playing now. Um, I'm never, I'm never uh, you know, a jealous or envious person. I have a lot of friends that play professional football. My best friend actually plays linebacker for the Indianapolis Colts. 
and I trained with him throughout summer leading into the NFL draft and he's a great player and I know that I'm you know just as good in some things I do better and I know there's some things he does better than me but uh, you know I just feel like you know there's a sense of you know bitterness watching I, I don't really get to watch and, and enjoy the game as much as just kind of dissecting and kind of put myself at a linebacker point and see what I would do and how I'd react to some of the plays but um, other than that, you know, it's just, it's tough to watch right now and uh, it really needs, um, I really wish I could have another chance to kind of get some closure on uh, that end. Um, I have a, a lot of inspirations. First off, you know, my, my parents, my mother, my father, um, my grandma, my sister, my younger brother, they're always big supporters, always come to every single game. I don't think my mom and grandma have missed a game of football, basketball, track since I was a little kid. And, you know, they drove 12 hours to come watch my college football games, so they're great inspirations. And uh, my high school track coach, Mr. Von Enns, he was also my English teacher in high school. He was always, uh, you know, a great supporter. Never really said to pursue a professional career, but always, you know, gave me that confidence that I needed. And my high school basketball coach, Coach Chapman, and my high school football coach, um, Coach Caserta. I think, um, you know, having six sacks in a game, tying the national record, that was a great moment for me. Uh, one particular moment I had was um, jumping over Garrett Wolf, which was the nation's leading rusher in 2006, and getting a sack after jumping over him. And um, I think that, you know, that was a, a great play. I anticipated him trying to, you know, jump at my legs, even though he really didn't do that much, but he was only... It's only about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, I was able to jump over him anyway. So uh, I think that was, those two moments, uh, I feel like they were my best in my college career. Um, I don't feel like I have any regrets in football. They're not, not like a cocky statement, just, you know, I was getting recruited by, you know, top programs, Big Ten programs, Michigan, uh, Notre Dame, I had visits scheduled to them ended up breaking my ankle in the previous year I tore my ACL and uh, those things kind of labeled me as injury prone and um, they took my you know offers and, and visits away from me and I ended up uh, at Western Michigan you know and um, there's nothing really in my control as far as you know having you know the way things panned out maybe I wouldn't have been All-American if I went anywhere else and uh, I just feel like everything happens for a reason and I'm, I am where I'm at uh, because of the things that occurred in my life. And I'm, you know, thank God for what I had and what I was able to do. And I'm just praying on another chance. Uh, my football motto is uh, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And um, when it comes down to it, you know, the person that works the hardest is gonna, is gonna make it. To get a second chance would uh, mean the world to me. Um, I believe, you know, everything happens for a reason. I'm here for a reason. I have no quit in me. I'm 100%. I'm faster, bigger, stronger than I used to be before my surgeries. And um, you can attest to that when you see me on the camera or if you see me in camp, uh, hopefully in the near future.